Bronx indigenous history is all around us. And the Bronx River is where the borough got its name. Once a lifeline for Native American tribes that first lived here, now the river relies on us as a lifeline. My name is Roderick Bell. Um, I'm a descendant of the Powhatan community of Virginia. My, name, my given name is Nemenikisu Mukwap. Nemenikisu Mukwap means strong, fearless warrior. It means I'm in charge of leading um, the youth in my community. I'm in charge of leading um, the siblings behind me, the cousins behind me. Um, I'm in charge of leading my community in the right direction. A very big prominent part of our language is um, working together. And the word that we would use is called Mamaween. Mamaween means we move together. Well, my name is Cynthia Paniagua. I'm a dancer, choreographer, healer. Um, I am a carrier descendant of Andino culture, and I'm also Boricua. I'm a defender of rivers. I'm a defender of fresh waters. I've worked with uh, communities along the Amazon. And I continue to just acknowledge that we have encoded wisdom in our bodies. If I know certain healing modalities right now, it's because it was passed on. If my grandmother was able to teach me what she taught me, my ancestors have gone through a lot for that to even get here, you know? Um, and, and the women in particular um, that, be hold, that are holding these traditions, um, it's just really important to, to lift that up. Yes, and I'm here with my amazing friends at the Drew Gardens in the Boogie Down Bronx, the borough where I'm born and raised and represent and I'm hoping to bring forth the truth. Welcome to Drew Gardens, here in the heart of West Farm Square. We can do kayaking, canoeing, we have workshops with dream catchers, we do yoga here for free. All the programming here is, is welcome to the public, open to everyone in the Bronx. cherry blossoms, we have a beautiful willow tree, uh, we plant daffodils, and it's just a beautiful place to come. The Bronx River has gone through a big transition since we made contact, um, and right now it's at a good point where you have so many people from the community that's coming out and working together to clean the river. We had uh, about 67 communities come out and pull tires and cars and garbage out of the river, which is, it made a huge impact. Um, and right now we have a lot of indigenous communities that are making their way back to the river and refining themselves. Um, and we're also reconnecting other people who may not have been aware of the indigenous roots. Now that we want to do is, we want to shed the bark off. language we call it a machine. Algic was the original language that was spoken here on the East Coast. 
Um, Aldrich has been spoken for about 12,000 years. Um, and we actually still utilize it in the English language. Some uh, canoes can fit about 40 to 50 men and women side by side. Um, and again, you would burn it really, really hot. That way that the sap can start to flow within the tree. And then it will seal it up, seal up all the holes inside the tree. So now your, your canoe is waterproof. So all up and down the East Coast from Canada all the way down to the Carolinas, we had a combination of um, Algonquin communities or um, Wappinger communities. You also had the Siwanoi who were primarily Wappinger. Throughout the land, you had the Lenape. I don't know if you guys are familiar with the Lenape. But all of this was shared. There were no borders. You wrap it, get some wood, create a splint on it, and it's a rattle. Everything was utilized. You didn't waste anything. And most importantly, there was no plastic whatsoever. When you actually hear a lot of people that primarily look African-American that say, I have a grandmother that was Native American, 99% of the African community is interrelated, uh, intermixed with the Native American. Now, unfortunately, due to a lot of the laws that went on, you were forced to say that you didn't have it. You know, you were told to say that, no, that was a lie, you know. There is so much history to discover about the indigenous people of the Bronx. But to understand this river, you have to drive up the Bronx River Parkway, up to where it begins, at the Kensico Dam named after a Siwanoi chief that once ruled there. And if you drive all the way back down, the Bronx River runs alongside it all the way to Soundview. We are standing in the intersection of Leland Avenue, Home Avenue, and Soundview Avenue, where for thousands of years, up until the 1600s, a Siwanoi village stood here. It had over 70 wigwams, a flourishing Native American tribe and community. And knowing this history is what drives me to want to put a placard in this green space right here so that everybody that passes by knows what land they are standing on. Siwanoi. And this is Class and Point, the place that I've always come to when I want to be close to the river. For the Siwanoi, this was a place of bubbling activity during the warm season. They would come here and collect clams and fish. This was where they had a huge resource of food. And this is the other place we would like to acknowledge the Siwanoi and possibly put a placard or a bench or some artistic monument in memory of that Native The Bronx River, after 100 years of industrial pollution and after 400 years of colonization, relies on us to keep our indigenous history, culture, and natural namesake alive. Organizations Pepatian, Pregones Theater, and the Bronx River Alliance have come together in support of the work being done by Roderick Bell, Cynthia Paniagua, Mario Figueroa, and myself. To better understand the importance of the history, the culture, and the river itself, one must become one with all three. to give voice to the existence of this history 
this knowledge and this river so that we can all become keepers of our truth and reconnect to an ancestral way the Bronx River awaits.